it one more time. We got one more service. Zen, we got one more service. Amen. And we're going to blow the shofar. How many are ready to hear God's voice today? So let's blow the shofar. consider this what do we call the law this is not the law this has nothing to do with the law amen and this has to do amen that what we're all about we're about serving the Lord amen and I have listened to a lot of different individuals amen who have come and uh, uh, taught and brought these issues up amen of all this thing that's happening, amen. And in our society, we don't really understand it. I mean, I I taught you guys pretty much about atonements and extensive Bible studies and so on, amen. And uh, we put them on a lot of this stuff online, and it's a lot of detail stuff, amen. In the very end, Christ paid all the price, amen. amen. But it's important. To the kingdom of God right now, because of what's happening in Israel, and I'll and I'll and I'll share some things, but I want to read a scripture this morning, or this evening, Hebrews chapter nine, and it says this, verse eleven. But Christ came as the high priest of good things to come, with greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that he is not the uh, this creation, not with blood of a goat, cows, but with his own blood. Uh, he is entrusted in the holy place, he entered in the holy place once and for all, having obtained eternal redemption. For if, if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkle on the unclean sacrifice for purification, purifying the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God? Cleansing, amen, your, uh, your conscience from dead works to service of the living God. And for this reason, he is the mediator of the new covenant by means of, uh, by means of death and for the redemption and transgression that is to those who are called and receive the promise of the internal inheritance. Father, we come before you this morning, Lord God, or this evening, Lord God, and I pray at this time, Lord God, that we stand before you as the books are open, Lord God. Let us have a cleansing of a heart, Lord God. Let us search our minds, Lord God, starting with our sinful lives and the pleasures of sin. I pray tonight, Lord God, that we surrender these things to you. Many, Lord God, have fallen short of this glory, Lord God, whether it be here or missing, wherever they are, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that your voice at the sound of the shofar, Lord God, and we recognize the time is near. Holy Spirit, we ask you to be in this place as we begin to cover this, Lord God, what you are doing in this time. I pray for your presence. I pray for your holiness. Bring us to one mind of understanding, Lord God, who you are as Yahweh and creator of this world. Father, thank you for sending your son to die on the cross. And, and shedding that blood, Lord God, so we can have the glory of your holy name. We thank you in Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. 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 Let me share a few things what's happening in Israel right now. Amen. They did something, and uh, we've been waiting, as the Bible says, that, you know, peace and safety and all these things. 
Well, back a few months ago, before the COVID happened, they were intended to do this a while back. Amen. It's called the Abraham Accord, where the president, our president, amen, and uh, the leaders of the Arab nation and uh, Netanyahu on the nation of Israel and Jerusalem and, and all that and come to a, a, to a place of peace. I mean, there's a lot of detail about all this. Amen. You can go online and look for yourself. It's called the Abraham Accord. Amen. And you will find it if you look it up. And it talks about having peace and safety and all these things that are taking place in the nation of Israel. Amen. This is a part of a covenant promise. Amen. And this is according to God's plan. Well, right now, amen, there are rabbis, amen, who have been talking about the coming of the Messiah. Hello. And we are waiting for the coming of the Messiah. Ooh, okay. During this time, amen, in the atonement, amen, the high priest has to go hide himself for a few days, amen, and then he comes out during or right after the atonement. Okay? So he goes and does what he needs to do back in the days of Aaron, amen, to cleanse, to prepare himself. We already know Jesus did. I'm just talking right now what is happening in Israel. So one of the rabbis, amen, Mr. Kapsoski, as I can't say his name that, recently told, amen, that they, he has already been in direct contact with the Messiah. He says, to understand the, re the religious Jewish men are, talk are taking se this serious, this is a serious matter in the nation of Israel. It's important to know that the rabbi, amen, Kasowski, amen, is considered one of the two or three, amen, one of the uh, uh, top rabbis of the Orthodox Jewish community, amen, and all the other of the mystic rabbis who have now tasked him, amen, with informing the public of the Messiah's intimate, intimate arrival. I mean, you're hearing that. I'm here right now like, Okay. The rabbi begins to uh, 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 have, he had a, a three hour interview, listen to the warning, with a warning. The process of redemption is about to start happening very quickly, at a fast pace. It is important that the people remain calm, steady, and act pro uh, properly. It is the right time. There is a potential Messiah in every generation, and there is righteous men who are now, uh, uh, or in the priestly nation, who, and they couldn't understand who had, in every generation this was happening. This happens with this Messiah, they're supposed to bring him out after the Day of Atonement. Yeah, is to come out. We know him. Hello? Are you here? Yeah, come on. Who's our Messiah? Jesus. Jesus. And everybody can go. Ooh. <laughs> okay. So what we learn at this time, amen. You see, because this is the time we know that Jesus fulfilled everything. If we go back into the study, amen, why the Day of Atonement? Why all these things? Why did God had, you know, God offered two goats at this particular time? One was a scapegoat. One had to die for the sacrifice of sins. Jesus fulfilled all that. Are you here? Right now, he is our king, but he's not king yet. He's standing at the right hand of God right now as the high priest in fulfillment. So right now, if this is what the Bible says, amen. We just read, amen, how uh, he is a high priest of all good things to come, greater more than the perfect tabernacle, made not with hands of, 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 of buildings and everything else, not with bloods of goats and calves. You see, God seen it, amen, amen, and God decided, amen, at one point in time, they would take the blood of an animal, amen, sprinkle it on, amen, the mercy seat, which right now is, or excuse me, when Christ died, amen, 
went to heaven, took his blood and sprinkled it, washed the sin away that what Lucifer did, amen, it was washed away in the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, no more sin, amen, on the mercy seat of God, amen, oh, you're hearing me today, and washed and cleansed, so that makes us washed and cleansed, now we turn to Jesus Christ, can they get an amen, and so before you, before you have to understand right now, what we are looking at, is God opening the books. Okay? Revelation chapter 20. Talked a little bit about that last week. There are books. Books. And we're gonna I'm going to show you some things tonight. What I found in my research, amen, about three books. Because there are days, amen, when we pray for something, ask the Lord, and we wait for it, and nothing happens. Christians have been waiting for this thing called, amen, the rapture for years. In the Jewish nation, 20, 30 years ago, there have never been a time such as now. There have never been a time such as now. In the time of Jesus, it was corrupt. There was what we call protest today. There were things happening. There were shaking going on. Nations were doing this. Romans were doing that. What do we got in our government today? Man, we got problems. We got issues. Somebody understand what I'm talking about. God is trying to get a hold of us, amen, in a time where we need to get a hold of ourselves and start searching our lives out right now. Christians do not understand, amen, that God has books and they are open because they've never been taught, amen, about this season. So Jesus tells us, this is a chapter 9, I hope you read it, amen, it is a fabulous book it explains everything that we have been Paul brought it out amen entirely amen and when we study and try to break it up in all different ways amen what it's all about amen but Paul breaks it down for us are you here today amen. but right now what God is looking at is your prayer life come on. Come on. amen we have to understand we've been praying and waiting for the Messiah to come well so has Israel now their, uh, their Messiah is at the door. <coughs> Our Messiah is still waiting to come. Can I get an amen? amen. And so well, the, there's a time, amen, like we're living in, when is God really listening? I'm about to bring out some things with you, amen, because this is a time of searching. You can know your Bible, but do you know God? And by your actions says everything. Are you here? You know, the day of atonement means so much. I had a question from this young man, amen. He said, Why did God allow why didn't Jesus fulfill the atonement during that time and die on the cross at Passover? And it's a simple question, it's a challenging question, it's a good question. Because he's coming back to fulfill this yeah. time. Yeah. Are you here? Amen. Amen. He had, it was written down. It was, it was something that he had to do during the Passover. We know Exodus chapter 12. We know all that. Amen. But when he comes back, amen, he comes back, amen, he came as a humble servant. He's going to come back as king. Yeah. And when he comes back, amen, he's going to pass judgment on an ugly earth. Yeah. Isn't that a good thing? When I think of prayer, turn your Bibles this, this, this evening, amen, about, uh, to the book of Psalms 51. David, amen, did something, and right around the times, amen, during the atonement, he committed an act of sin. And here's a man who had it all together. Here's a man, amen, who was considered the king of Israel. Now, come on, brothers. He had it all together. He was a chulo, amen. He liked looking at women, amen. But he crossed a boundary. Because why? He thought, I'm the king. I got it all together. I have a personal relationship with God. God knows me and I know him. I am listening. I want you to hear me tonight. Because many are walking just with this type of attitude. The Bible says, amen, that in a time, amen, where David was supposed to be, amen, battling and out there doing his work, amen, he decided to just to relax. 
and take a day off, amen, but didn't realize, amen, there's an enemy out there and it wants to make you slip. Can I get an amen? amen? And where he was supposed to be at, amen, he fell short. And he started, it started with just a look. What's wrong with looking at another woman? What's wrong with that? Most men don't see the problem, amen. And before you even keep looking, amen, your eyes are not going to allow you to do that. And you're going to stumble and fall just like old Dave did. Can I get an amen? amen. And amen, we find amen that when he committed this act, God was about to deal with him. The Bible says, amen, because why? Where are you getting that, Pastor? I'm getting somewhere. You want to come along? I said you want to come along. Yeah. Because you look at it now, amen, from God works, amen, from this time, amen, of atonement to the next year, amen. And if God has to judge and give us blessing or cursing, amen, think about what the world is doing. Think about what's going on in your life. If you don't repent, because you may pray and you think God is, you know, oh, God listens to me. You know, the devil knows how to bless too. To make you think it's God. Right. And if you're not getting it together, amen, you're going to think, amen, well, I can go do what I want. I can live what I want, amen. But you're lying to yourself. Yeah. David, amen, committed an act of sin. And it was a horrible sin. It was a sin, amen, that was terrible before God. It was so stinky to the Lord. And the Lord gave him time to repent. Twelve months. God turns, amen. He gave him full time. The Bible calls in times, amen. And the fullness of time had come, amen. And God was about to judge. Because that's what man does. They think they can get away with it. I'm good. Remember, I have a connection with God. Amen. I have this. Amen. I have a relationship. I know my Bible. I know this. But your sin comes back to God. Are you here? And so right about this area of time, Amen. The one thing that God does, he says, I will judge you for your sin. In 2 Samuel chapter 12, he says, Nathan, amen, to, to confront him. You know why? Because he wasn't listening to David no more. Are you here? Now's the time to search your heart. Now's the time to really look at your sin. What are you doing? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm trying my best. Is it good enough? You want to hear me tonight? Come on. He turns around, amen, and God told him, amen. Nathan goes and tells him his little story about a, eat, about a lamb. Remember that little story? Yeah. How many remember the little story? Yeah. Well, you turn it all, you make it pretty for the lamb. And, oh, he took the lamb. Oh, no, no, no. He committed an act of sin. Did you get an amen? amen? And so, amen, at the end of this, amen, David realizes that God can take his life. Why does God have to save Nathan? Because David is far from God. You see, you can be in your own glory and everything's happening good for you. And I know God and I know, I know the Bible says this and God says this and God, oh, God bless me. And you're far from God. God's not even listening to you no more. That is a scary place to be, church. When you think you're smarter than God, when you think you have, I've heard many men say, I have a relationship, but they're far from God by their actions. Are you here? Remember, these books are open. But here's what David connects with. Psalm 51 says this, when David realized what he had done and what God can do to him, he says, have mercy on, upon me, O Lord, according to your loving kindness and according to your multitude of tender mercies. Blot out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly with my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. We are all full of sin. You hear? What qualifies you for sin? You see, this is what God desires for a church right now. Every day you come to the Lord. Are you praying? This is the, I've been telling you over and over. Right now is examination time. This is about you and God. It's about me and God. It's about me and God right now. I'm getting selfish right now. This is because why? The Bible says the day of atonement is arise and God is going to bless us or curse us for the things that we've done or have not done. 
And if you think you got it all together and you're not fruitful, you're not doing the things you do, you need to repent tonight. Because Sunday morning is coming. That's the day of atonement. And all that's already taken care of, man. God's going to shut his books. Where do you think for the next 12 months you're going to be? Because the next 12 months, if you don't do what's right, we can struggle. You think we have it hard now, it's going to get worse. So have you been turning your heart to God like David has and turns to us, have mercy on me. Because why? The man of God, Nathan, pastor, comes and reveals things. Amen. We have to soften the blow. I'm, I'm not like Nathan. Okay. Nathan have a little story of a lamb and Pastor Joe's how. Repent! But if you stand in the place and your heart is sincere, why would not God hear you? Right. Have you dumped everything out? Have you surrendered all your heart to the Lord? Are you here today? Because as a church, we need to stand in prayer for those who do not know. Okay? You read off these prayer requests. How many people, people that come to church that sit here do not know God. They know of a God. They know that God can do. They can see God in you and I if you're because they see the blessings. Yeah. Look what they're driving. Look what they have. They're blessed. I want that. Do you really want that? Or do you want the walk? Yeah. What do you want? Right. You want to learn how to walk with the Lord? Or do you just want cars and furniture and all the things that will fulfill the lust of your heart? You can't say, I know God, because that's what they look at. You see, driving around with a hoopty, well, you're not a blessed man. Oh, that's called work in progress. Can I get an amen? amen. Hello? But the prayer is that God needs this church for men and women right now to learn how to reach out for others and pray to others because that's something that we forgot. Are you here? To teach our prayers, believe it or not, your prayers can change a world. Yes. God took these disciples and told them, man, you're going to change the world and turn it upside down. I'm going to put the Holy Ghost upon your life, amen. And I'm going to bless you, amen. And you're going to see, amen. Remember when they took Peter and John, amen, to the Pharisees, to the religious people, amen. They could not even understand. How can these uneducated men know what we know, amen. Beyond that, amen, look at their boldness, amen. And they were shining, amen. They were brightness coming out of them. What's going on with them? Why do they have that glare? What's going on? Look at the sun, amen. They look bright as the sun right now, amen. Because they, had, they felt something. I feel something right now. Can I get an amen? It's the power of the Holy Ghost was upon their life, amen. Because they had boldness, amen. They weren't afraid, amen. They weren't driven by money. They weren't driven by anything. They were driven, amen, because they saw Christ, amen. They saw him in his glory, amen. They seen him come down from heaven and they seen him go back up, amen. Don't worry, don't hold on, because I'm coming back for you, boys. Get ready, amen, and live today like there is no other day for Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen today. You gotta understand that's what God desires. But he had a life, amen, of prayer. Right now, the 10 days of awe, amen, this means the gates of heaven are now open and God is about to make some decisions for all of us. You see, Christianity don't believe that. People don't believe that. Are you here? Those books are open and God is going to seal life or death. Hello? Think about this for a second. What David was going through when, when they finally, amen, after a whole year, God let them get away with all, can, come on, you know, man, why did they get away with everything? Right? How come they can get away without praying? Why do you, do you really think that they get away with anything? When people they're supposed to be saved are confused. Bondage, amen. They don't know which way they're going. Do you think that's blessings? 
I fight with my family. I'm this over here. I'm going through this event. I'm so confused. I need me time. I'm all this. Blah, 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 blah. It's all about you. But they're saved. Do you really believe that? When my God says that he is not the author of confusion, but he is the God of peace. Are you here? That you can, and a storm will come, amen. You know how to stand up and fight back. Man, you don't run because why? Cowards run. I said, cowards run. So don't tell me you got power when you're running. Oh, I believe. You don't believe that much. These days are a days when God, heavens are opening, man. And God is making a decision. Amen. Revelation chapter 3, amen. And we look, amen, when God says, because he's going to bless the now and the future. God will bless us now and our future. If God decides for this ministry, this church, where you're at right now, amen, is you're looking to the future. Where are you going to be at five or ten years from now? But let me tell you, amen, and according to what I understand, amen, ten years from now, I hope to be in heaven. Can I get an amen? amen. I don't know about you, amen. All these other places, amen. They let them be stuck here. Let them get bombed by that asteroid that comes this way, amen. And let them feel all the havoc that comes out. Let them get the mark of the beast, hello. Let them go through all this democratic nonsense, amen. Let them destroy each other. I want to be in heaven. I said, I want to be in heaven. But the Bible says, amen, about this. Verse 5, he who overcomes shall be clothed in a white garment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. God has books open. It's the book of life or book of death or the in-between. How many are hearing me? Right now is a time. What did David do? He did some self-reflecting. He did some self. You know, people self-reflect on, on church nights. Not during the work week. Only on church nights. I gotta. I need a vacation because it's because church is too hard. You have church twice a week, man. Hello. I need some self reflection. No. What did he say? The same thing. Don't blot my name out of your book. God gave him time. And what did he do with that 12 months? Ask yourself, what are you doing with your time right now? What are most people in churches today doing with their time? Because obviously nobody has time, amen, to win a soul. Are you here? The Bible says, amen, this is takes, amen, this is what he says, amen. It, uh, but if I confess, he says, I will confess his name before the Father and before the angels. Overcomers. We've overcome a lot of stuff in life. Can I get an amen? We've out, some of you outlasted a lot, amen. You've seen people come and go, amen, and you're hanging on, amen. Keep going and keep hanging on. Can I get an amen? Keep hanging on, amen. The blessing is around the corner. Can I get an amen? What God desires from this ministry that we need to learn how to reach out to God. He's going to teach us how to reach out to people. Because we forgot those things. Are you here? James chapter 5 verse 16 says, The effective prayer, a fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Now the word righteous in Hebrew means zedek. If I get that wrong, did I say it right, Jeremy? Zedek. Zedek. I want you to hear me right now. Zedek. Zedek means the righteous one. Zadik means, amen, a holy and righteous man of God. Okay? Amen. amen. Ask yourself, are you holy and a righteous man or woman of God? What would you, what was, what's your list that makes you holy and righteous? What's your list? And let's compare it to God. Because if you believe what the Bible says, and I truly do, I have to search my own heart during this time, and this is exactly what God is saying. Because the, what he's talking about, 
the right acts which a person does always before God and is aware what is happening and learns to reach out to help others. Learn how to feed the lost. Take care of the lost. Bring them into the kingdom. Don't give up. Amen. Most people don't have time for that. Who are the righteous ones? Well, God uses Job. Remember, he called there's none like him. Hello. Zadig, that's him. Is that right, Jeremy? Zadig? Yeah. Zadig. Righteous. What qualifies us to say, well, God says, amen, a fervent prayer. There's the beginning. Amen, a heartfelt prayer. Righteous before spending time right now. God have favor on our ministry. God have favor with our family, our yes, friends. Lord, Lord. But God, where do we stand right now with Him? Where do I stand with you, God? You know, I mean, think about this. Of the righteous man that God called. There's none like Job. God was bragging on Job. Can he brag on us? Job took it to the next day. Job was no David. David had an eye for the women. Job turns around and says, I will not even look at a woman that my eyes even may defile God's covenant. When he says, amen, he walked by, he covered his eyes. Job was an honest, righteous guy. He honored his marriage. Even though his wife was saying, die already. Oh, look at you. You got a bunch of pumps all over you. Oh, just die. Right? Just die already. You're ugly. Can you imagine that? I threw the ugly in there. Noah was considered righteous in a timing, man, where there was chaos. In a timing, man, when the world, the Bible says the intent of man was evil. Chaotic. What did he do? He was obedient to God. He built the ark. He shared with other people. And he would stop and preach and warn people, this is happening, amen. Get it together, amen. The book of Jubilee tells us, amen, that he was trying to reach people. And other people just walk away. You know what? Righteous before God. Amen. Thank you. You look at, amen, the righteous acts, amen, of Elijah. Verse 17, Elijah was a man with the, a nature like ours. What did Elijah do? He had his hangups. Come on. He had his weaknesses. He felt sorry for himself. He, he, man, he had an emotional breakdown, amen. Amen. He didn't go hot. He ran, amen, away from God. But in the moment, he was on fire for God. He was preaching to people, amen. Challenging the people to repent, amen. If God be your God, then serve him, amen. If the devil be your God, go after him and die. But here he was, amen. God says, amen, look at it. He had a nature like ours, but he prayed earnestly. That is the answer of righteousness. You want to be righteous? Jesus says, you want to be righteous? He took, remember what he told the, the rich man? Give all you have. Go. <laughs> I want to be called a disciple. I just don't want to surrender at all. I obtained too much. Amen. I remember a man who said this, amen, he says, this one man says this, he says, well, God told me to do something. If God told me to do something, I would do it. I would do it. But you know, that's what the Bible's there for. The Bible tells us, amen, to be honest with God. Pray to him. Honesty starts. I mean, we, we have something, with, but even in the Old Testament, they didn't have, we have the spirit of God. Jesus died, amen, his blood shed, amen, and went to heaven, amen, and when he left, he didn't leave us as orphan. He gave us a gift, amen. 
And that gift, amen, right. teaches us, amen, and it's called right. conviction. It shows us and leads us, amen. But we need to pray to him. We need to respond to him. We need to reach out to him. Are you here today? Right. These are things, amen, that you and I have to understand. We have his word, and we need to respond to the word of God. It is the power of prayer, amen, that helps us do this. But what most people do, they are slipping away from their prayer life. Saddest thing that when pastor has to ask you guys, have you been praying? You pray? Only in church? Hello? We are, things are getting rough. We are in a time or a season. And let me tell you something. We all have sinned. There's not a righteous person in here. Hello? You want to meet qualifications? Let's go for it. Come on. Look what the Bible teaches us. Paul turns around in, in, in Romans chapter 3. Paul says there's not one righteous. Not even one. No Jew, nor Gentile, nor Greek. All have sinned under the glory, under the heaven. There's not one righteous, not even one. There is not one. Chapter three, verse uh, 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 eleven. Listen what he says: None who seek after God. They all have turned aside. They all together have become unprofitable. There is none who does good. Not not even one. Their throats are like open tombs. Which their tongues, amen, who have pierced with deceit. Their poison, amen, under their lips. Their mouths are full of bitterness and cursings. Come on. Come on. How easy is it to drop an F-bomb, amen, or any other uh, bomb after that? The thought, amen, the thought, this is a time uh, when we have to really, really search the heart. Right now, amen, we all fall under this right now. The books are open. Heaven is open right now. Heaven is open. Don't worry right now about nothing, but just think about. This is a time for you and God to get right. But, but Lord, I'm worried. Don't give your worries right now. You know, come on, everybody has a phone, and as soon as that thing goes up, ah! <laughs> no, I go through that too. I get calls at 2, 3 in the morning sometimes. Mm -hmm. My uh, my wife knows the person too. Tell him to stop. <laughs> you better tell him something. Yeah, all right, babe. Let's just ignore <laughs> Are you here? People who profess, listen to this, I love this, this one man said this, a rabbi said this. People who profess to have a desire to know God, but, says, but, who, but after a careful, careful thought have agreed that their search is more about a good argument than living for him. Are you here? It's a lifestyle. It's even more eye-opening when you know that either blessings are going to come this year or cursings are going to come this year. Yeah. I feel sorry for those, amen, who walk under their own grace and mercy and call it God. Yeah, come on. I feel sorry for those who come against God's very word and call it all kinds of names and say that's not for them or that's not for their ministry. Are you here? Our sin is before God right now. It is a time for pray. I pray for God's grace. Psalms 53, amen, tells us this. God looks down from the heaven upon the children of men. Listen to this. To see if any who understand or seek God. Every one of them has turned aside. Isn't that scary to know? Because you think about the predicaments of life. The things that tonight you're going to go home and forget about this sermon. You're going to 
forget about this. Because it doesn't pertain to you. Everybody watching all that, you know, oh my God, oh my God, hey, Pastor, hey, hey, how come you don't, I go through it too. Well, do you sin, Pastor? Of course. Pastor, sin. What do you do? What do you do? It's not like we want to wake up and say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to fight with you and throw you around. <laughs> um, you know what, right now, I, I'm going to get mad and start cussing at people. Oh. No. Well, I'm gonna, you know, one time I woke up rebellious. I was like, man, I'm going to be rebellious today. I'll show God. That don't work. What are you here? People do things and they call it unintentional, but they know that it's wrong. Are you here? So when the Bible teaches us, amen, Revelation chapter 20, that God says, amen, and they were books that were open. Are you here? Because listen to this. God looks down from, how many believe this right now, that God is looking down from the heavens? Amen. Do you believe the Bible? Okay. Now, if the Bible says in I was in Second Chronicles chapter twenty nine, verse twenty nine, that the eyes of the Lord are everywhere. How many believe that? Okay. So, so, what is He going to find? Not just in your homes, but in your hearts right now. Is it righteous? Are you looking at the clock? Are you in a hurry for it to go somewhere? Amen. Come on, let's get this church thing over with. Come on, it's like somebody calls you, man. Well, I'll be there Sunday. What for? After I happen, I'll be gone. Really, Pastor? Really? No, I was just kidding, but you're scared. <laughs> Are you here? So God looks down from the heaven upon his children. Now, God says this, amen, that three books are open, contain, amen, records of every man. You're not going to find this in the Bible, or you're going to find it in other scriptures, amen, in the book of Gad. The book of Gad is in the Bible. And he says this, amen. He said that the Lord has contained, uh, uh, contained records of every man. The first book is contained, amen, the just deeds. Oh, that's me. <laughs> that's me. I'm the just deeds. Come on, just, righteous, oh, yes. Kings and eight, that's me. I'm the good guy. Can I get an amen? amen. All right. He says, amen, it contains the just deed of his peoples. And the Lord says, these are granted eternal life. Hoping people will love, he says, are loving, amen, and those who do not, amen, or those, amen, excuse me, uh, um, helping people, loving people, and doing unto others as they do unto you with love. This is what a disciple is supposed to do. A disciple, amen, well, his reward is caring, loving, and helping. Can I get an amen? Without even a thought, without even a consideration, amen, to be around the fellowship of sisters, this follows under you. To be around the fellowship with one another. Not to seclude yourselves. Make time. That's an ugly word I know for you. But make time. Amen. There's a lot involved in your lives. I know. Amen. I'm not a woman. Okay. I live with a woman. I see there's a lot going on there. Okay. So. Sympathize. But for a man. There's no excuse. Hello. Any disciple, amen, who has his house in order knows, amen, how to do things and what's expected. The day we start pushing that aside, we got to question if we're a disciple or not. Are you here? Listen to what he says. The second book contains unintentional sins. That's me. That's me. That's me. I don't do it on purpose. Come on. Come on, you can say amen. amen. The unintentional sins of his people. And the Lord says, put this book aside and save it until the third month has passed. 
and to see what they will do. Book number two. Are you hearing me? You know, in the commentary that I read, it said, amen, that Satan rose up. Wait, wait a minute. Who are these people? And then the angel sounds the shofar with a blast, amen, and turns around and says, shut up, Satan, for this is God's day. This is God's day, meaning the atonement is his day. These books that are open, amen, with, amen, the eternal life for the good deeds, the unintentional, amen, are for the people that are living today. Let's see if they're going to repent. Let's see if they're going to turn their hearts around and start trusting God. Let's see, amen, if they're so consumed with their lives, if they will remember what they have been taught. Let's see what they will do. See if they would repent. Because why? They have broken the standards of God. The third book is this. And they read a third book. And this contained the wicked deeds of his people. And the Lord said to Satan, these are your snares. Take them amen, and do what you want with them. And Satan took them, took the wicked to a wasteland to destroy them. Are you here? He takes them out. I think about how many loved ones that are being wasted right now through their time. Hello? God opens these books. Is he going to find your name in him? Hello? Everything is in the hands of God right now. Everything. There's nothing that you're going to say different. Make a promise tonight to serve him even more. And fall off. Hello? Those who are watching him and say, you know what? I'm going to change. I, I, I watch. I, I'm going to. I'm going to give more because that's what they want. No, no. We're not asking you to give your money. We're asking your time. Right now is the opportunity of your life to go before God, like David did, when he recognized that he was an adulterer. When he recognized his sin. You see, people don't want to recognize who they are. We want to recognize. The righteous things and to pretend amen we are clean and we have all these things but selfish people amen don't realize amen how selfish they are until someone points it out right. you know how selfish man I used to be and man I come home kick back put, take my shoes off and all that and my wife said babe can you help me with something like let's say go do the dishes Joe I'm like <laughs> you're a woman oh. <laughs> Hello. That's your job. Hello. That's not a sin, Pastor. It's your response. The heart turns. Can you watch the baby? Why? You want to know. Hello. Oh, none of you guys would ever do that. Pastor. <laughs> do you hear? Oh, I would never do that. Oh, yes, you would. <laughs> when they don't stop crying and they're like, I was what? Come on. Some of you forget. Remember little babies? They cried. Hello? It's the attitude and the conduct of Christian living. Paul says this in Romans chapter 12. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, amen, to present your bodies as living sacrifice. Amen. It says, uh, holy and acceptable, amen, for reasonable servant. Do not conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, amen. And this is what God desires, amen. What is reasonable service? You think it's just up here preaching and teaching, amen. It's not has to do with just being in the church. 
Amen. It has to do with being out there witnessing, telling others, amen, about who your Savior is, how he died on that cross, amen, especially if you know your Bible, amen. You know, well, I can tell you about the atonement, and I can tell you about this, amen, and I can tell you what Jesus did, but you know, I can tell you what Jesus died this dolphine. I can tell you how Jesus changed this dolphine's life. Amen. I can tell you the miracles. Amen. Well, I couldn't read. Now I can read. Amen. I can tell you the miracles. Amen. And explain. Amen. How, how he just turned around and raised this ministry from the dust of ground to where it's at today. It may not be a whole lot to everybody else, but to you and I, it's victory. Can I get an amen? When you see guys, amen, getting hold of what God is doing, it's the blood of Christ. Amen. It's the blood of Jesus. Amen. When he took that cat. He took that across, amen. He took it out, amen, all the way to Calvary, amen. He walked all the way up with pains and suffering, all the things. So he knows what pain is. He knows what sorrow is, amen. That's why we surrender him. That's why we pray to him, because we have pain. We have sorrow, amen. We're selfish. We're all those things, amen. And this is why we need to repent. This is why we need a teshuva. This is why we turn him into the Lord, amen. This is why David got on his, on his knees and prayed for mercy. See, don't wipe your don't blot me out of your book God do not blot me out of your book please I don't want to be just like everybody God is going to make a decision for this year you don't believe in him and I believe when God makes a decision for the next 12 months amen it's for the now it's for the eternity amen God get rid of this COVID please is it just the COVID? People are out there killing each other through protests and all this nonsense. There's a shaking going on, and it's happening in heaven right now, and people don't care. God's people are not crying for that. We're fighting each other, arguing with each other, criticizing each other, critical of each other. Looking at their walks and doing all kinds of nonsense that we all do. Argument with this church or that, I don't care. I care about what God says. God, forgive me. I stand before God and say, God, please, Jesus, man. Man, we're, this world is messed up. Think about this. In Lamentations chapter 3, verse or he says, Lord, search and examine my ways. And turn back, Lord. Let us lift our hearts and our hands to the God of heaven. Listen, we have transgressed. We have rebelled. And listen, he tells it, and you have not pardoned us. You want God's favor, church? This is the time, amen, to look at to, to Jesus. This is the time that Christ, these, you know, you can believe whatever you want to believe. But once those books are closed, they're closed. What is it? Well, God, I know you're going to do this. I know. But what are you going to do? I know God's going to do this. Yeah, but what are you going to do? Well, I'm going to stay over here, and, and I like the shade, and I'm going to, because God bless me. It's time to do something. We can't get out there and pass out flyers or talk to people. We need to get in here and pray. You need to go home and, you know, you tell people, pray at home. They're sleeping. All due respect. Yeah, I prayed really good from uh, 12 at night to 6 this morning. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's the time I fast. <laughs> You'll get it. <laughs> People, amen, who believe I'm in. I was talking to this individual and said, you know, Pastor Joe, we don't have to worry about all that stuff no more. We don't have to worry about uh, all that. We're, we're, we're in. We're in the rapture. So what qualifies you? Well, the blood of Jesus. I said, then live it. You know, a man told me, you know, you know, I still suffer with this uh, 
you know, this and that, and I still they do this, you know, chew tobacco, and, and yeah, I say a cuss word every now and then. So you better be careful. You're admitting you're mocking God. That's right. Hello? Don't tell you you have a relationship with God and you're living the way you want to live. And that's the life we have today. And the books are closing. And these books are ready to close. Sunday morning. Imagine this, okay? Right now, they're sitting, Israel, they're setting up. Their Messiah is going to come out. And every prophetic person in the world is going nuts right now. This can't be, this can't be, this can't be fake, this can't be this. Because it's not going according to what they believe. You got a preacher saying this, you got a preacher that says that, you got a preacher that says this. Some believe in this and some believe in that. One believes in all that nonsense. Well, it can't be the Messiah. Some were, you know, Johnny was telling me earlier, some believe in the, you know, this is the new year, and this is not the new year, and this is over here, and this is over there. Yeah. Oh. Amen. Pray. What I do is I pray. I believe in God's word. And if God says, amen, I'm open to these books. And I'm going to read, amen, whether you're going to be eternally with me. Hello? The uncertain are going to be in the tribulation. And the wicked are going to be in hell. Which choice do you have this evening? Do you believe in repentance, church? Yeah. Can we all stand up and say, I am righteous. I do not need to hit the altar tonight. I'm a Zedek. That's who I am. I'm a righteous man. I no, no, no. We all fall short of this. Jesus took the sins of the world. Jesus did. A righteous man who came. Jesus who had no sin. Jesus who took that blood, amen, of his own and died for us. And we should be grateful that we even considered to be with him in the glory. Amen. Are you hearing me tonight? Amen. Where are you? you know, come on. You close the book. Come on, you've read books. Come here, read a book. Amen. Right? When you're done with it, what do you do? Close it, put it away. What side are you going to be on tonight? What side? Prayer. Men of God who prayed. David, amen, repented. That gives us a second chance. If anybody, amen, believes in their heart, and you know, I, I don't, I, that's okay for everybody else. No, please repent tonight. Repent. Simple little prayer. As I close tonight, amen, I, got, I didn't even get all of it done. But to ask God to forgive you of your sins. If you're afraid of this altar, Amen. If you're afraid, I mean, I, I, I pray to God that you're not. Your hearts need to do some soul searching tonight. Examine yourself, you know, because you don't got rapture could happen tomorrow. Right. Yeah. A crash could happen tomorrow. Something could happen tomorrow. But where will your life, where's your life going to end up? I want to be where Jesus is at. If Jesus is going to be on earth, I'll be here. If Jesus is going to be in heaven, I'll be with Jesus. That's my desire. I pray to God tonight, amen, that you hear his voice. Because once those seal of decision is closed, it's done. And tonight, if we bow our heads, I want to encourage you. Make it right with him. Make it right with Jesus. You just ask the Lord God, I, mean, I know my righteousness is like filthy rags to you, Lord. I have fallen short, Lord God, of all the glory. It's time to search your heart. It's time to repent. Say, God, I need healing. If you need healing, God's going to heal you. 
Father, as a church, Lord God, we come together this evening, Lord God, standing before you. My Lord Jesus, you are standing at the right hand of God, intercession of our prayer requests. Father, I plead this morning, this evening, Lord God, for all of us, Lord God, that we can come in agreement, Lord God, that we have all fallen short. We can gossip with the best of them, Lord. We can say things that are evil, Lord. We can have evil thoughts. Some of men can turn a, an eye, Lord God, wherever it may be. We can be greedy, Lord God. We can be all those things. This year, Lord God, the soul winning department has fallen so much, Father. And I pray, Lord God, that you stir up our hearts and we ask to forgive us if we've fallen short. As a ministry, Lord God, I pray tonight, Lord God, that we trust you in our giving and all that's going on. And that hearts, Lord God, tonight would be with you, Lord, that you would bless every soul here tonight. And let us confess with our sin that we are sinners. For myself and my wife and our church, Lord God, that we can be better people, Lord God. Lord, that you teach us your ways and not our own. Let us find mercy and grace at your altars, Lord God, at your feet. That we may surrender our hearts to you tonight, Lord God, that we would be in your kingdom. If, you, if it's so to be. And Lord, there would, there would be more people Lord, who would come and they would see the glare and the shining love that you have displayed in each and every one of our lives. We pray for our family members. Father, we pray for the lost. We pray for ministries, Lord God, to open their eyes to the truth. Father, I pray, Lord God, for children, Lord
What do you see, Father? I pray for faithfulness out of all of us, Lord God. Teach us your ways. And Lord God, if we don't know your ways, let us to learn your ways. We acknowledge, Lord God, our ways are not like yours, Father. I pray for understanding. I pray for more understanding. I pray, Lord God, that I would understand your word, that I would convey truth, Lord God, to your congregation. And that these men and women, Lord God, would catch it. And that you would put a spirit of fire in their souls, Lord God. Lord, that we would turn, Lord God, to you in a time of need and worry. And we need your strength so much right now. And I pray for the lost souls that are out there, Lord God, that you're preparing to bring in, Lord God. A harvest, Lord God, is going to be fulfilled, Lord God, through the blood of Jesus. Father, as you stand, Lord God, and look down, I pray that Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord God, that you pour out a blessing upon your people. Let us be mindful, Lord God, of all that you're doing in our lives. Let us be grateful. Let us turn to you, Lord God. Tonight, Lord God, as we go our way home, I pray for a blessing, Lord God. Let your spirit shine upon your people, Lord God. Lord God, that they would go home and share a word with their loved ones and pray for them, Lord God. This is the hour of prayer, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that the heavens are open and your, your ears inclined to us, Lord God, that you hear us in this time. Ask for your blessing. Bless your people. In Jesus' mighty name, may we all say? Amen. God bless. We'll see you. Amen.